Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gummin. So today we've got the brand new Cytojet Phaser X and we're going to be doing a review and demonstration on it. So we'll start by having a quick unboxing just to give you guys a look at what you can expect if you do get one of these guns. Although I do understand that 99% of you guys will not be getting one of these guns. In fact, I was told by a ex-PPG rep, now PPG in Australia are the ones that import the Cytojet, so a guy that used to work for PPG here in Perth. He's now my 3M rep and he said that of the original phaser, so this is the second edition of the phaser, so this has got the X, this is the X branding. I'll get a bit more into that later, but yeah, of the original phaser, they sold one here in Western Australia. So yeah, pretty low numbers. So I do understand that most of you guys won't even be getting one, but you know what? I've got a big audience, so if you're gonna just have a look at this gun, why not look at it here? That's why I've justified it to myself. So I did um, ask myself the question whether or not I should even get this gun, because I knew that I would never spend this kind of money on a spray gun. I've heard they go for around 1500 Australian dollars, so very extreme pricing. Um, but yeah, look, I, I decided why not? I'm just gonna show everyone this gun. That's all there is to it, you know? So I actually get some people occasionally leaving uh, comments on my channel and some pretty nasty stuff that, that, yeah, like basically the way I said, they're just getting a little bit jealous that I do get lots of spray guns to review. But my reasoning behind it is as long as I sort of stay honest and true to the review, I don't mind doing it, you know? I don't feel as if I'm selling out my audience. And at the end of the day, man, none of you guys have to buy anything in any of my reviews. I'll just tell you where I got the things from. And if you decide to um, go and get something, well then, good and great. And um, yeah, look, on that topic, everyone seems to be very happy with the service that Spray Guns Direct uh, do provide. And the other side of it is lots of people want to see my reviews. They get value out of them. Um, and I think a big part of it is that I do focus on value for money. Like I'm uh, getting a little bit older in my life and I'm getting to the point where I want to start saving for the future. So um, I sort of put myself in the position of would I spend my hard earned money on this tool or this piece of equipment, does it hit that sort of value for money target which I would look for when I'm spending my own money? And look, I'm the kind of guy that shops at Target. I'm happy with the stuff that you get from Target. Look, occasionally you'll be walking down the street and you'll see someone wearing the same t-shirt as you or the same pair of shorts as you. And you know, I don't like that, nobody likes that. But at the end of the day, that's, that's what I've thought about this side of phaser and that's what it is. It's like any other luxury product. People with lots of money like to buy luxury products so that they're not like everybody else. That's what I think anyway. I could be wrong, but yeah, I sort of had to think about it and I think that that's exactly why this gun exists as a luxury product to be a bit of like, you know, that's I'm one of the very few people with that thing, you know. And look, all of that aside, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but... I just don't feel as if I would spend my money on it and I wouldn't recommend that you spend your money on it. Yeah, maybe on the uh, standard SATA, you know, it, all of a sudden, <laughs> this gun here makes your standard SATA look like absolute value for money. Uh, personally, I think if you look at the bigger picture and the other spray guns that are on the market, yeah, there probably is some better spray guns that you could, you know, get yourself if you wanted value for money. But hey, at the end of the day, you don't need some dude on the internet telling you that. You All you need to do is um, look at the price of the listing and then look at a couple of the other spray guns and um, quickly decide that, yeah, that's not really representing value for money. Uh, but all of that aside, let's just start focusing on the guns. So I actually have used these guns before. It's it's basically, so this phaser will function identically to the other SATA 5500Xs. So I've actually done a separate review on the SATA X5500s. Now, you're welcome to go and check out that video if you like. Just have a scroll through my channel or you could even just type it into a YouTube search and uh, yeah, find it that way. But yeah, basically I got a couple out and they weren't spraying quite properly. They were like top heavy. And yeah, I didn't actually end up getting a response from SADA about that, but they sent out a couple of replacements after I sent them back. They didn't have, they like radio silence. They didn't admit or they didn't confirm or deny. Um, but yeah, either way they gave me a couple of ones that were functioning. And uh, yeah, look, 
the the way they spray is quite nice. I prefer the 1.3 I for clear coat. Now we are in quite a warm environment here in Perth, so when I sprayed this job here, it would have been about 33 or 34 degrees uh, Celsius. So so that's around 90 degrees Fahrenheit for my American viewers. And that's why I found the 1.3 to be best suited for me. Now what you see me doing here is this is actually the second job that I sprayed with this spray gun. There must have been the tiniest little bit of clear coat built up between the fluid tip and the air cap. So I've found that nine times out of 10, if, you got, if your clear coat gun isn't spraying properly, when you get it, like, and it was previously, like the last time you used it, it was spraying fine, but then you go into the booth and it's not working, it's gonna be the tiniest little bit of uh, clear coat, which is like bridging between the fluid tip and the air cap, and as it turned out, that's exactly what it was in this one. So I just pulled that air cap off, um, just cleaned the fluid tip um, with my fingers, and off we're going spraying perfectly again. So, as I say, this was the second job that I actually sprayed with it, but I've used this gun for, yeah, well over a month before doing this review. Now, I've only used it for clear coat. Um, it's one of those things that I was actually joking around with some guys on Instagram. Now, originally, I just posted a photo of this thing, like one of the photos, uh, the promotional photos from Sada themselves, and people loved it on Instagram, just people going nuts over it, right? And I was joking around with my, one of my followers saying, no nah, man, if I got one, like I'd be too scared to put paint in it. Like something worth $1,500, you, you wouldn't put paint in, you know? Um, but yeah, look, all of that aside, I'm, I'm not overly precious with it at the end of the day. It is just a spray gun. Um, however, I can just like, I mean, I got this for the purpose of review and I do thank you guys over there at Spray Guns Direct. But I must say like, if I spent my own hard earned money, like, over a week's work on one spray gun, I would probably not even want to use it. I'd probably like keep it as like a museum piece or something like that. Um, but yeah, look, as far as the aesthetics go, I, I find it a little bit bland. Now, oh, people, people like just think I hate Sada. And to me, like, I, I don't even care about it. Like, I've been loving using this gun, right? Every time I use it, they, my jobs come out killer, right? They come out really good, nice flat finishes, and the way it sprays, I've got nothing against it, but uh, people just, just for telling it like it is, like if, if you are honest to yourself about a Sada jet, well, me anyway, uh, it comes across as if I hate it, but I, I kind of don't, I don't even care, like, it, you, you know, like if, if you're the guy that walks down um, the street in your Gucci and your, or your Prada or whatever, I don't care, and if you're the guy that sprays cars with Sada, I really don't care, and I've got nothing against Sada making money, or making, you know, top of the line products that actually do perform well, but are quite expensive, I mean, like, good on them, I've got nothing against that, I'm not going to try and, you know, wish them any ill will, I'm just going to tell it like it is, and if, if you are that soft that you think I hate Sada Jet because of telling it the way I say it, well, yeah, look, go find yourself another spray painting channel, There's, there might be a few others out there that you know, cater to your needs, but I'm just gonna continue telling it like it is, from my opinion. Um, and look, honestly, it's just a matte black spray gun, man. That's the way I see it. And as I say, I don't hate it. I, I, like, it's just boringly matte black, nearly too matte black, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't wanna show the photo here because I've actually had copyrights and takedowns on videos before for sharing an image of someone else's on my uh, video review. So I won't be including an image, but a, a quick Google search on SATA Jet Phaser will show you what the original one looks like, and I'm sure many of you know what the original SATA Phasers look like as well. Um, but they've actually got like um, some silver parts on them, and to me it just looks a little bit neater, like it's, it's got something to break it up, so I, I think they actually looked um, better than this one. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. I, I think the gun itself sprays brilliantly, 1.3. I'd, I'd say it's probably a little bit overkill for the cooler months. So, you know, we do have four seasons here in Perth. So we do have, say, three or four months where it is a little bit cooler. And I probably wouldn't really want to use the 1.3. Uh, short of dialing it in, winding that fluid in a little bit. I must admit, one of my favorite things about this phaser is that they got rid of the 
air swivel so down the base of the gun on most of the starter jets they've got this swivel so you cannot put one of those cheetah valve aka regulators on the base of the gun but on this one you can so you probably noticed at the very start of this video if you didn't um, I actually put one of the cheap ANI ones on and it just looked wrong I'm like okay no that it's like I don't know, wearing your Gucci um, suit or whatever with a pair of Reeboks. Basically, that's what it looked like. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had to go and put that SATA. I did have one. That, that SATA uh, gauge, pressure gauge, was on the base of one of my Deville whistles. And I'm like, yep, yeah, okay, that has to come off. And that has to go onto this gun here. So... Yeah, um, all that aside, I, I really appreciate that you can put your own gauge on it now. And yeah, they did take off the digital gauge, so that's a bit of a, an odd design choice. Um, I heard that, yeah, Porsche, actually. Porsche did design that gun there. So hope you guys have enjoyed watching it. And yeah, look, hope any starter fanboys haven't taken it too much to heart. Because as I say, I, I don't hate them. I'm, I'm just going to tell you um, the way I see it from my opinion. I've been smashing out some really killer paint jobs with this. Only been using it for clear. But yeah, in the last month or so, I've been really happy with the way it's been performing for me. And it's actually going to feature in quite a few more videos. So I'll actually be doing a full spray painting uh, video on this car. So obviously we just uh, saw the clear coat stage in this video, but I've got a um, yeah full video of this. So I actually spray this one in stando blue. And yeah, I've got lots more stando blue videos coming in the future. Until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching. This has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.